All right, I uh, finally got ABS working on my 240SX here, so I just wanted to give a little bit of a system overview. Uh, so if you were interested in doing this swap yourself, uh, you can kind of know uh, what goes into the swap. I'm gonna try to keep this video short um, because it's just gonna be me talking to the camera. Uh, I'm gonna do a basic overview of all the parts you need, and uh, then I will show you how my installation went show you specifics of, of my install. Uh, so the main parts you're gonna need for a non-ABS chassis, uh, so if you use, uh, if you already have a car with ABS and you just wanna replace your module with a MK60 from an E46 M3 like I used, um, for the most part, it's gonna be very simple and straightforward. You're obviously gonna need all of the module and sensors from the BMW, uh, but if you have, uh, if you already have existing uh, wheel speed sensors with um, that are Hall Effect, uh, they should work. Um, the internet guides say you need a T count between 40 and 50, um, but most things will work. Uh, this is confirmed. Uh, this has been confirmed to work with a lot of the Nissan rear-wheel drive stuff, like 350Z, 370Z, G37, uh, Corvettes, S2000s, BMWs, obviously, <laughs> and uh, Subarus. Uh, most of most of those will work with the system uh, as long as you have uh, a wheel tone ring, a wheel speed sensor tone ring within 40 and 50 teeth, you're good to go. Okay, so uh, going back to the non-ABS uh, install, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, hopefully there was a model of your car that came with ABS that's going to make your life way simpler. Um, I have a 1989 S13 240SX with a five lug conversion. Uh, the rears were very easy on mine because um, they already had, uh, I have an R33 Skyline subframe that had ABS, four channel ABS, so those were already taken care of, but I had a custom fab, uh, the front. Um, but if you do not have any options for your chassis, uh, all you're going to need to do is find a tone ring that fits over your hub or some sort of way to get that tone ring spinning <laughs> on the wheel. I was just talking to somebody who was going to try to make a uh, make a, a tone ring for their brake rotor. That's awesome. Whatever you do, you just need to get um, a tooth count between 40 and 50 teeth, as stated. Um, and then obviously, you're going to want to fabricate a sensor mount and get a sensor on each wheel. Uh, the Overall diameter, the outside diameter of the tone ring does not have to match. I have a much smaller rear 48 tooth tone ring on mine and a much larger front 48 tooth tone ring. Uh, that will work. It's, it's, a, it's looking for a 360 degree uh, wheel travel, obviously. And so um, you have a lot of latitude there just to make sure the teeth match, teeth count matches. Uh, for wheel speed sensors, uh, you, this is kind of, uh, Pretty open. You can use whatever you want. And uh, from what I understand, uh, I'm using 2006 Nissan Maxima front sensors and 2009 G37 rear uh, wheel speed sensors. As long as they're Hall Effect and uh, are within kind of that range, yeah, you should be good. Uh, you can do your own research there. Uh, we, can, we can get to the data logging part of this, but once everything is installed, uh, before you even install the uh, get it all plumbed in and everything. You can actually check with the computer to see if your wheels are uh, recording speed appropriately. Okay, so that's the chassis side of things. Uh, for the actual ABS parts, you're going to need um, the MK60 module. So the actual ABS module, and I'll show you here in a second, is a one-piece unit. It's got obviously like an aluminum manifold for all the, the passages for the brake hydraulic uh, passages. And then the ECU is just bolted to the back so it can actuate all those pistons to do ABS things. Um, so that's a single piece. You're going to need that. Uh, it's called an MK60. M is in uh, Mark. K is in Kangaroo 60. Um, all right. You're going to need an ECU harness connector with flying leads. So uh, that is the actual harness that plugs into the ECU for the ABS module. Uh, you just need some... If you're getting this from a junkyard, you just need a couple of... Uh, some amount of wires you can tap into, obviously. There are, there are also things you could just buy if you don't want to do that, which I'll explain later. Uh, you're also going to need a brake pedal switch relay. Uh, this is sort of complicated. The BMW does this in a weird way. Uh, my brake pedal 
switch for this 1989 Nissan is normally open, which means there's no contact. When I hit the brake pedal, it completes a positive circuit and turns on the, the rear brake lights. Uh, this wants a normally grounded switch, so when your foot is off the brake, it is going to ground, and then when you hit the switch, uh, it needs to be open. So I'm using a five pin relay, and there are guides uh, on the internet for this uh, to show you how to wire this up uh, that you can check out, but that's, that's a very important thing. You're gonna need two line pressure sensors. This will be very obvious when we go look at them uh, in the car. They are, they're looking at the pressure for the front, uh, the front brake input from the master cylinder as well as the rear line input from the master cylinder. Uh, so they go in line between your brake master cylinder and the MK60. There's two lines going into the module and then obviously uh, four lines go out to each wheel. You're also gonna need an OBD2 port for connecting to the actual MK60 module and uh, doing, this is for like troubleshooting or for, for the bleeding process. To bleed ABS, you need the pump to be cycling when you're uh, pressing the pedal down. Uh, and then, so that's what the ABD2 port is for. And then you're also going to need a, uh, a thing called an INPA cable. So this is what it looks like. It's a very cheap $20 thing on Amazon. Buy two of these. Uh, for whatever reason, they just die randomly at inconvenient times. So uh, they're so cheap, just go ahead and buy two, keep one on the shelf. <clears throat> the actual software you use is called um, INPA. This is very common if you're like a, a BMW person. Uh, it's a way to get in and change the ECU, uh, stock ECU parameters, uh, like if you're doing an automatic to manual swap or something like that. But the cool thing about this being very common and you can find information on the internet about this INPA software is that uh, we can use it for our ABS modules, which is great. And the last thing, the last thing you're going to need is some brake line adapters and fittings. Uh, the BMW uses a weird bubble flare style uh, brake line, and so uh, I've got M10 by 1.0 normal JDM uh, brake line fitting. So I've converted all my lines are still M10 by 1.0, and then they just go into adapters uh, at the actual module. So uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is the actual setup on the wheel. I'm just going to show you the front wheel. The rear wheel is slightly different, but it doesn't really matter. Um, the concept will be the same. And then uh, it's a bit of a mess. I just got this running, but uh, we'll show you the actual module in the car and all the plumbing. I don't know if I mentioned this yet. I didn't write it down, so probably not. Uh, you'll also want to get a yaw sensor if you want uh, DSC or dynamic stability control functions. Uh, the internet says you don't need it for ABS. Uh, my ABS wasn't functioning at first due to a power supply issue. Uh, so I actually have a yaw sensor in there right now. And I think I will actually use the DSC functions because I think it's actually pretty neat from like a being on track standpoint, but uh, you don't need it. It's also pretty expensive. If you buy the kit from Doug at, uh, it's either 3DS or RHT, uh, I'll grab a link and throw it in the bottom of the YouTube video. Uh, they'll send you everything, which is great. So all, all the things that I listed on the MK60 side will come in a box, which is great. Uh, you'll obviously need to figure out your own wheel speed sensor and tone ring situation. So speaking of that, uh, let's get going on the wheel side of things. Okay, so this is a pretty standard setup. I have a 300ZX twin turbo rotor with a 350Z track back brake rotor, but none of that matters in the context of what we're doing here. So hopefully everyone can see this. Um, I have a fabricated uh, <laughs> steel knuckle. Just realized the uh, track fix I did there on that little cotter bin. Um, and so for me, uh, because this is a fabricated steel knuckle, it was obviously very easy to weld up this sensor bracket uh, directly to the knuckle. Uh, if you have like an aluminum arm or something, you're just going to want to pick up on a uh, an existing hole or or do something. It's it's pretty straightforward. So as you can see, as I rotate this wheel, you can see my 48 tooth tone ring. Uh, this was uh, 
the hub was machined down to match that inside diameter of the tone ring and then that was pressed on and i think we used a little bit of jb weld just for you know to keep it in there make sure it wouldn't uh, go anywhere but that's that's press fit on and then like i said this is a 2006 nissan maxima sensor that is um like a pretty i don't know i don't know why i chose that i just it looked um the closest to what i needed and i wanted the 90 degree sensor uh you can obviously get other sensors so that's going to be up to you but this is what this looks like it's it's very straightforward uh you'll just you know want to get the line run around your brake line and out of the way so the wheel doesn't hit it and then find a, a nice way to get it back in the chassis but uh yeah so that's kind of the tone ring setup pretty straightforward okay so let's uh hop into the car once again i apologize for the mess because it is kind of under construction but let's take a look at this module. Okay. So this is the MK60 brake module. Uh, I just fabricated a, a bracket here that bolts to the chassis and then uh, obviously bolts to the manifold. So uh, this makes it really easy to service. Uh, if I need to swap this module out, if something happens to it, I can just unbolt the four bolts uh, and then, you know, get it out of here. These are all the adapters that I was mentioning. These are all of my JDM M10 dot uh, by 1.0 threads into these adapters. These are uh, from a company called Russell. They're a fairly common um, adapter company. You can get them on Jag Summit, whatever. They're all local. Uh, sorry, they're they're all uh, U.S. based. This is the actual um, connector that I was talking about. So I don't know if this is, pulls out easy. But, uh, yeah, you will, if you're getting this from the junkyard, you're going to want to get the module and then obviously grab this and cut off at least, you know, get at least a foot of wire to wire this up. Um, uh, this is the, the 3DS kit, I think it is, is what the company is called. Um, and the really neat thing about this is it is labeled really well. So you can see this is like battery 12 volts. Um, all the wheel speed sensors are labeled. This is your brake pedal switch. Um, this is obviously the OBD2 port, which you will connect to your INPA. Um, I have a very ridiculous uh, zip tie setup for my yaw sensor here. Once again, I was just testing this. You just want this to not move. This also goes in a very specific orientation. You want it, This looks like it's upside down, but these bolt holes uh, face up and then the connector needs to go towards the front of the car. So this is very important. I'll be making obviously a metal bracket for this um, at some point. Okay, so um, back here is also a, a, I don't like how this is and I will probably change this at some point, but uh, there are two ways to do this. Uh, these are the lines coming from the master cylinder, obviously. Um, if you look at this, this is the front one. And then this is the rear one. You can tell from the way that they are and because they're labeled. Um, the other way to do this without this heinous daisy chain of adapters here is you would actually take this and mount it to where they uh, go into the uh, the actual module. So I can tell uh, that, so this is the, what is that? That's the front one and this is the rear one. So they actually go on the side of the module. Uh, you can't tell, uh, everything on the, all the labels are on the side, but there's actually like a stamped letter, um, on, on the side that shows you each position. So it's like H and V for front and, uh, front and rear in German. I can't remember which one is which. And then there's like front left, rear left, uh, front right, rear right on all the wheels. It's all labeled here on this module. Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, these wires that are going everywhere. Um, obviously these are going to be to my rear wheel speed sensors, and this is to my front left. And then, uh, beyond that, uh, like I said, we've got power going up to the front and then there is a brake pedal switch wire also going up to the front, but that is about it. I don't know if there was anything else I wanted to cover. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, go into detail about the IP, INPA software. It's very important to use uh, to use that to bleed it, but um, you can find resources for that online. 
But yeah, if you have any questions about this setup, uh, let me know, and uh, I will try to answer them as they come in. Thank you much.